Okay, so if we don't have the ability to dictate what it is that we're going to dream about or to control what's going on while we're in the dream, then it means that unfortunately we can't re really rely on our ability to dream as being the way of allowing us to uh, process and digest psychological distress or trauma. There's a good chance that your mind or brain has had many years already in which it's tried to do that and the fact that you're still carrying a degree of trauma indicates that this has not happened properly. The reasons why it might not have happened properly is because this psychological digestive ability can be easily overwhelmed particularly when the bad things have happened to us in our childhood or teenage years. So when bad things are happening to young children, a young child is very easily overwhelmed by the enormity of a bad experience simply because they don't have too many coping abilities and resources available to them. They haven't been on the planet for long enough to develop uh, an array of coping strategies. They often uh, have very little social power, no financial power, very little physical power, often have very little voice. And so they don't have the means or the ability to be able to cope with bad experiences. And this means that they're fairly easily overwhelmed by the enormity of bad experiences. <clears throat> and because they're easily overwhelmed, the natural coping ability or the natural digestive ability that, that I've referred to, the psychological digestive ability, is easily overwhelmed and swamped. And it means that what we would hope would be processed by the child's mind slash brain in the context of their dreams uh, is more likely to result in nightmares where they wake up in fright and as a result of waking up in fright the digestive ability which the, or the digestive process which the dream in fact is grinds to a halt and where children have repeated nightmares what this means is that the digestive ability continually grinds to a halt and the psychological or emotional distress that we had hoped would have been processed and digested through the young person's system doesn't get processed through and it remains sitting within them in a fairly raw, undigested state, a bit like bad or off prawns, that your stomach just simply isn't going to be able to digest once you've swallowed them. And they're going to keep on repeating on you over and over again because your stomach can't actually do anything with those. So our mind or brain, when we're a young child and a traumatic or highly distressing event happens to us, can be easily overwhelmed by the enormity of that bad experience because our ability to cope has been overwhelmed. And every time that our mind or brain tries to process and digest it, we may wake up in a nightmare. And this means that the uh, associated distress that went along with that experience remains sitting within us in a raw, undigested straight state. And it begins to uh, form a reservoir of distress, which is our burden of trauma, that we then take with us from that experience into the next experience. And if we're similarly overwhelmed by the enormity of that experience, again, the psychological trauma simply gets added to that burden of distress, which we carry with us then into our teenage years, then into our early adulthood. And of course this is exactly what happened with the Vietnam veterans and the Afghan war veterans that have wound up with PTSD. They're, they experience traumatic or highly distressing events in their childhood or teenage years before they got to Vietnam or Afghanistan. They are carrying a burden of distress which wasn't able to be processed. And you can view this as being a bit like a distress cup. Their distress cup was already carrying quite a burden they got to Vietnam or Afghanistan, bad experiences happened there, and they simply, their distress cup simply reached an overwhelm point whereby they simply couldn't cope with any more and they were just simply swamped or overwhelmed. And any ability to do psychological digestion simply ground to a halt due to that overwhelm. <clears throat> and it meant that the, pro, the, the, the distress, the trauma, was, stayed within them in a raw, undigested state and could have stayed within them for decades without being adequately processed or digested. The men that didn't wind up carrying PTSD or experiencing PTSD from their war experience in Vietnam or Afghanistan perhaps arrived there with a fairly small amount of burden in their distress cup. They might have just had a fairly 
uh, blessed childhood and just experienced the normal bumps and scrapes of childhood and a fairly low level of distress in their distress cup. They got to Vietnam or Afghanistan. They certainly got to fill up while they were there, but it never reached that overload point where they were just simply overwhelmed. And as it never reached that overload point, their mind or brain could continue processing and digesting it and ultimately reducing that level of burden that they were carrying. And these are the men that didn't wind up with PTSD.